Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at using Amazon Web Services EC2 server to host a Perforce database that we can use for version control for projects. So the first thing uh, we're going to need to download PuTTY so that we can interface with the Linux server that uh, we're going to have hosted on Amazon and we're going to need uh, to download the Helix Visual Client which is the client that you interact with Perforce on your local Windows machine and then we're also going to need to download the Helix Core or P4D which is what will run the Perforce server itself on our EC2 instance. Um, and then we're also going to need to make a AWS Amazon account uh, so that we can host our uh, EC2 instance there. So first things first uh, we're going to go ahead and download uh, PuTTY. So I'll have this address linked in the description. Um, it's also right here in the video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and download the 64-bit version of PuTTY. And that a download. I'm also, while I'm up here, going to go into Perforce and I'm going to download the Visual Client. Um, and then just to make sure I have that, if you already have the Visual Client, then you can go ahead and probably skip this step. I'll just download that right there. Um, it may ask you to like log in or set up some info or something. Um, you can do that. Um, usually it gives you an option to skip it um, and install anyway. And we're going to download the P4D. Um, for this, we don't want Windows because we're going to be hosting our EC2 instance on a Linux server. So we're actually going to go through Linux um, and it's going to be 64-bit. Um, we're just going to download that. Okay, um, and now we're going to go over to Amazon Web Services and uh, sign in to their console. Uh, if you already have an account, great. Uh, you can sign in quick like I just did. Otherwise, go ahead and make an account with Amazon Web Services. Um, it might take up to 24 hours to like initialize your account and get everything ready. So go ahead and do that and then come back later after your account's ready to go. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to go to EC2. And then we're going to go install PuTTY real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, run the PuTTY installer here. Um, we're just going to click next through all of the prompts. Um, that's fine. I don't need a shortcut. And we're going to go ahead and install. Okay. Uh, I don't need to view the README. And we'll finish up right there. Okay. So now that I've got PuTTY installed, um, I can go through Windows and open PuTTY. Um, and it'll look like this. So we're going to actually use PuTTY so that we can connect to the uh, P4D that Amazon is hosting. Uh, so first things first, in order to access PuTTY from our command line, we need to add PuTTY to our Windows path. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and um, on Windows, we're just going to start, start typing view advanced system settings. And that will make this window pop up right here and we're just going to click on environment variables and we're going to go to path and then with path selected we're going to go to edit and then we're actually going to edit the install location uh, for our putty exe so that's going to be if I open up a file explorer um, it's going to be in our C drive uh, program files that right there and we'll go ahead and just X that out and then with this line selected we'll hit edit and we're just going to put semicolon and then paste that line in there and press enter and we'll hit OK and OK and we'll hit OK there and now if I hit Windows and CMD to launch the command prompt I should be able to type PuTTY in here and the uh, PuTTY window will pop up right here for me. Alright, so now that we've got PuTTY up and running with our path and we can run the PuTTY commands from our Windows terminal, we're going to go ahead and create our uh, Amazon EC2 instance. So I'll go ahead and close PuTTY out and I'm going to leave this uh, command prompt open because we're going to need it here in a minute. So now let's get our AWS EC2 instance set up. 
before we get going, uh, real quick, I'm using a uh, the free tier uh, instance uh, for this video. Uh, if you're interested in a larger instance, uh, you need more room, uh, you can check out their pricing model here. They're not too expensive. I recommend it. It's not that bad. Um, so we're just going to go ahead into launch instance, and we're going to select this one right here at the top, the Amazon Linux AMI SSD volume. Um, and we're going to hit select. Uh, and again, we're going to stick with the free tier eligible uh, T2 micro. Um, and we're just going to hit next and next to add storage. I'm going to move this up to 30 since that's the uh, free tier eligible limit. Uh, and again, you can learn more if you want more space. And we're going to hit next and then we're going to go add a security group. I'm going to add a new rule. Um, it's going to be the custom TCP rule. Uh, the port range is going to be 1666, and we're going to leave this to anywhere. Um, I tend to work from school a lot, so if you uh, are on a school machine, it's harder to make sure that you have the right IP address all the time, so just leave it open from anywhere. That way you can access it from your computer at home or your computer at school or um, whatever you, wherever you would like. Um, so the security group, I'm just going to name... Um, I don't know, P4V and maybe P4V right here. And we're going to go to review and launch. Stuff all set up. It's going to let us know that our P4V security group is open to the world. And that's fine. That's what we did on purpose. We're going to go to launch. Um, we're going to make a new key pair. I'm just going to call this P4V underscore key. And we're going to download that key pair. And then we're going to hit launch instances and it's going to initiate our instances and we're going to hit view instances. So I've got one terminated instance uh, that's still being cleaned up uh, from something that I did earlier uh, today and we're going to go through now while it's um, instancing and uh, just wait a little bit while it uh, gets going. Okay, um, now that our instance is up and running, I'm going to go back to the command terminal and I'm just going to type puttygen uh, so that we can launch puttygen. Uh, and that looks like this. Uh, this is what uh, putty will use to convert the PEM file that we downloaded and uh, turn it into a PPK file. Um, so I'm just going to hit load and it'll open up my uh, perforce setup directory, which is where I installed my. Uh, PEM file to, um, but it's only looking for PuTTY private key files right now, so I'm going to change this to all files, and there's my P4V key right there. I'm just going to select that. Um, yes, I'm just going to hit OK. I know it's a foreign key, and I'm going to make sure this is set to RSA, which is the default, um, and we're going to save a private key. Uh, yes, and I'm going to save this as P4V underscore key. All right. And now we're done with the PuTTY key generator, so we can close out of that. And I'm going to go back to my uh, command prompt. And inside my command prompt, I'm going to cd to uh, desktop and perforce setup. And I'm just going to list all the files I got in there. So there's my P4D installer, my PEM, and my PPK. So I'll CLS to clear this. And now we're going to connect to our Amazon instance. And to do that, we're going to need to go back here to our window. And we're going to select this um, running instance. And we're going to hit Connect. And it's going to have this pop-up window. And we're just going to copy this SSH line right here, because uh, it saves us from having to type it all. Hit Close. Go back to our terminal. And I'm going to paste that file. And then we're going to go over here and change this uh, PPM to PP, uh, PPK. And we're going to change this SSH to PuTTY. And we can hit Enter. And we'll get two windows pop up real quick. Uh, one is this uh, PuTTY security alert, um, just saying that our server's host key is not cached to the registry. Um, so we're going to just say yes because we know that this is a uh, trusted host. And here we have our uh, Amazon EC2 instance that we've now connected to. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, close this guy out and OK. And now we're going to uh, send our P4D installer over to it. So I'm just going to hit up on my keyboard. And we're going to just go all the way from left to right with the changes we need to make. Uh, the first is instead of putty, we're now going to do PSCP. Um, on the other side of our PPK, uh, we're going to need to do P4V. Uh, this is a file we're going to be sending over. And then we just need to put a colon at the very end. And we hit enter. And I typed P4V instead of P4D. Uh, so uh, we're going to go back and make sure that that says P4D. And now we should be good to, good to go. So that's going to uh, copy our file over there. And it won't take very long. Um, all right. So now that that's set up, uh, we can go ahead and uh, just push up a couple times to back to our putty command. And we're going to reconnect to our EC2 instance. OK. Uh, so now I can hit LS. Uh, just make sure my P4D file is there. And then I'm just going to make a directory with mkdir, so make directory perforce, ls, make sure that's there, yep. And now I'm just going to move my p4d uh, into my perforce folder. So we're just going to do mv p4d and then perforce slash perforce uh, p4d perforce. Okay, and we'll ls, and now all we see is our perforce, and I'll just cd perforce, and I can ls, and we'll see our p4d inside of our perforce directory. So now that that's there, we're just going to chmod uh, plus x to turn this into an executable. Well, and we'll see it'll turn a bright green color, and now we can just hit dot slash p4d, and it'll tell us that our perforce server is starting. And that's it. We've now started our uh, Perforce server on our Amazon EC2 instance. And once that's good to go, uh, we can just close this window. Um, it'll tell us, are you sure you want to close the session? Yes, that's fine. Um, and we're done with our command prompt, so we can close that too. OK, so now that we've got that set up, I'm just going to go to Windows and type P4 Admin. Um, if you have not already installed the P4V installer, go ahead and do that. Um, so. Uh, real quick, uh, we need to type in our uh, server address here um, for our EC2 instance. So we're going to go back to connect, and we're just going to copy this guy right here. Um, this is um, the public DNS for our server. Um, and I'm just going to replace this with my new stuff, and we're going to make sure it has colon 1666 at the end, since that's our port number. Um, and my user is going to be B House, and we're going to hit new uh, to make a new user for this Perforce instance. Um, I'm just going to do B House as my username. I don't need a password. Um, here's my Tamu email, and I'll go ahead and hit save. And now I can just hit OK. And my Perforce admin should open, um, and it's going to open up with this uh, I'm going to become the sole super user access and that's fine I'm the admin of my server and then uh, p4 admin will be open right here and congratulations you've connected your perforce instance to your Amazon EC2 server and that's it for this video